It's a long way down. I felt it. <laughs> it's a long way down. I felt it. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> What's up, everybody? That we one back. scared me. One more. What? That one scared me a little. Oh, you better be paying attention. We're about to do an episode. I know. How I'm scaring you and we're about to do episodes. I was just admiring my wine glass and it just scared me. And the black man jumped out and said, yo, yo, yo. It scared you. <laughs> I'm very scared of you. You should have been used to that by now. <laughs> you do say yo, yo, yo a lot. Yeah. I, I know. That's my thing. Yo, yo, yo. What's up? All right. You ready to do this? I don't feel like there's a lot of focus and concentration going on right I'm now. I'm super focused. Oh. My concentration is like right here. It's about to be one of them type of episodes. All right. Let's do this. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Success in Black and White. The podcast. We are back in the house one more again. We are back one more again. Yes. In the house. Again. Coming to you live. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, is that what I'm supposed to say? From the house. <laughs> You're right about that. She just didn't forget. I t- um, <laughs> we, all right. We, we got 40 minutes or so. Tighten up. I'm there. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm there. Okay. I, I Before we came on live, I told her to um, focus and I told her to, um, like, get it together because she seemed like her focus isn't there and she said it's all there and she pointed to her forehead <laughs> so i don't know if she was just saying like all the focus is there <laughs> on her forehead or i don't know there's focus up in there somewhere okay we just gotta find it all right yeah well you ready to do this tonight? I'm ready to do this tonight. It'll what, be a good episode. What are we talking about? So tonight we are talking about comfort zones. Comfort zones. Yes. I'm excited for this topic because um, like you alluded to this morning after you got out of the shower, you said you have basically an entire keynote speech in your head kind of surrounding some of this topic. And when you say stuff like that, I get really excited because... When you have keynote speeches in your head, you bring the heat. Like you were trying to bring the heat this morning. Yeah, I was fired up. I was ready you to go this morning. Fired up, and I was like trying to wrap my head around the fact that it was still you know six thirty in the morning, and I and we, I was ready to give. And a you speech. were ready to give a speech, and I'm like, okay, let me try to be your audience. No, <laughs> but it wasn't working, so I was like, save it for the podcast tonight. Yeah, <laughs> that's when I'm creative though. Like in the morning when I get up before the yeah. day. Yeah. Um, wears and tears on my mind and my body and my spirit. Yeah. Like I wake up ready to go. And, you know, when you're living in your purpose, like you wake up, you should be ready to go. Well, and that's, I like that you have this habit of keeping something that you can like write down your thoughts. Sometimes it's me. <laughs> you're like, hey, yeah, write hey, this go, down I, before I forget it. Yeah. I'm like, grab, grab a pen real quick. Write yeah. this down. <laughs> Which is great. And then you have like a notebook and stuff that you keep. And it just, I always know like when you're in the flow and usually actually almost every morning, except for mornings where you're like super tired. Yeah. But almost every morning I see you like in the flow which is really cool to see because I, my brain doesn't exactly work like that. So it's kind of like, I admire your creative brain. Yeah. This morning I was ready to go. Like you, you said, I, I literally had an entire keynote. Yeah. He was trying to get Fired up and ready to go. I was like. You could have put me on a stage it, this morning at 630 and could've. I would have rocked the crowd. Yeah, you would have. Like guarantee would have brought the fire and rock the crowd at 6 30 this morning no matter how much coffee they had no matter how sleepy they were i'm pretty sure that i would have rocked the crowd Mm -hmm. that's how i felt when i woke up this morning and i'm confident that i could have done it yeah you were there so you were right on yeah but you know they're gonna get it right now i know i'm excited they're gonna get it right now i'm excited too i am really excited because you guys know by now you know us you know, Daryl is like this, like things form inside his head and then spill out and it all sounds really good. But then, but then I'm very methodical and research oriented. And so I, he was like, I got this one tonight. I'm like, cool. And when I pulled up the notes, there's a 
diagram on the note. Yeah. And I can't, I'm like still in shock because I'm looking at a diagram. I feel like we can, we're probably going to have to post it in the YouTube video. Uh, yeah, we can do something. Yeah, but it's just, it looks really cool. So I'm really excited because I'm usually the one bringing the data and the research and you brought it today. You brought it. So it's a visual though. It is like visual. when I'm ready to yeah. go, you know, like we say, different people learn different ways. Yeah. So I had to include all of that in my notes so that I can refer to it and so that I could um, do what you do best and kind of paint the picture. Yeah. In the midst of inspiring, in the midst of motivating, in the midst of getting people to start to think. Yeah. So. Well, I'm excited. All right. That was fun. Um, so comfort zones. I think this is a really interesting topic because we had a conversation not very long ago where we were just talking about um, some of the things that are bringing us risk in this time in our lives. And we were both being pretty transparent. Oh, and we've I, been very transparent. Yeah. And I told Daryl, I said, you know, I, um, it's so funny because if you go back and listen to last week's episode, you'll find out like by nature, I'm an orange in the true colors. So like, I will jump out of an airplane. Like I will, I'm pretty free flowing, like not super process oriented. I never used to be risk adverse. And we were having this conversation about risk. And I told him, I said, since I've become a mom, I have become a lot more risk adverse. And I think it's detrimental sometimes to my growth, to our growth, to like the business, to just every, to life sometimes. And so I, I told him that like I was just a little more risk adverse and I didn't see him as somebody who would particularly be like, let's go take a risk because he is so process oriented. And he told me, no, I'm actually much more open to risks. Like parenthood has actually had an opposite effect on you. It has. So talk a little bit about that. Like what has made you start stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit more? Well, for me, it never um, was something that I thought about much. I just thought that it was a part of me and that's just the way that I was and I was process oriented and I like to think things through. And when we had our kids, the roles did reverse because now my focus is not so much on staying in my comfort zone because um, it created that sense of security for me. Um, it created that, you know, safe bubble. I want to leave a legacy. Mm. So that's what changed. Now, all the people that I was worried about impressing, all the people that I was worried about what they thought about me, like none of that matters because now my family matters more. So I want to leave a legacy and that's what my objective is and to live out my purpose so that my kids can see me doing that so that as they grow and they learn from us, they know what I was about, what I lived for, and they are clear about it and that I left a legacy for them. I think that's really interesting because I talk about um, either getting or staying in and out of your comfort zone. And I have one way of looking at it that I think probably a lot of people have of looking at, am I in a comfort zone? Am I moving? Am I shaking? And you are saying all these like next level things about yeah. leaving a legacy and not being worried about what people are thinking. So do you think that people tend to stay in a comfort zone when they're afraid that other people are going to judge them? Oh, definitely. I'm pretty sure that one of the main things that people fear or think about, which keeps them in a comfort zone is worried about what other people are going to think mm. or worried about failures or worried about not breaking through as to what they're trying to achieve. And I feel like people get complacent and they accomplish some small things or they have some small successes and they kind of just hang out right there and maintain status quo. For me, that's not even an option anymore. That's why I'm always talking about with you. And that's why we're always talking about leveling up. Yeah. Like what's next? How can we get better? How can we be a better example for our kids? Yeah. And that's what matters to me. And sometimes it takes something like that to nudge you and push you out there or to make you dive. Yeah. Do you feel like you have become like you've crossed the line since coming into parenthood or has there been a catalyst that has not necessarily been being a parent that has gotten you to be more 
open to doing things that are risky that will push you outside of your comfort zone. I definitely think that when we decided to take on this business and this venture that we're doing right mm -hmm. now, that was a catalyst um, because everything that I was doing and that I was focused on was more behind the scenes. And now with this business and what we're doing, it kind of puts us, you know, forward facing. So it's just a part of it. Yeah. And it's one of those things that you can't really hide from because who you are is who you are. And people are going to see that regardless. So no matter how much you hide or how much you think that you're not being seen or you're not being watched, people see you. People are watching. So you might as well, like we say, control the narrative. Yeah. Live out your purpose, live out your calling. And in the meantime, you might as well work on that legacy. Yeah. And that can be for you. That can be for your family. That can be for whoever or whatever you want it to be for. Yeah. Um, I think often I see, and maybe this is just my perception of the things that I see like online or with friends of ours that are um, entrepreneurs. But I think that it seems like people who are entrepreneurs are more open to stepping outside their comfort zone because they have to be more open to failure. And I think that's one of the things that gets scary for, for me. Like I've really stepped back from being risk adverse and from stepping outside my comfort zone because I'm terrified of failing and I'm terrified of <laughs> essentially taking our kids with us on a failure spiral, right? And so that yeah. catches me and then you come back around and 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 help balance that in our partnership, which is good. Definitely what you just said matters. And, and it is important because the last thing that I want to do is be so aggressive and so hungry that I just go out there and bring, you know, my family down and bring my kids down. But on the other end, if you are in a comfort zone, you have no room for growth, mm. especially when you're entrepreneurs, like you can't remain stagnant because the world is constantly changing in front of you and you have to change with and you have to continue to level up and you have to continue to improve as an entrepreneur to continue to grow. Yeah. You know, because when we're doing what we're doing, you know, everything changes so fast in the business that we're in and you can find your your niche you can find your comfort zone and kind of um settle in and before you know it the industry is taking another stride mm. and while you're in your comfort zone you're literally going to be left in the dust while the industry is continuing to move forward so you have to get out of that try new things explore find out what's going on continue to grow continue to learn and move with the industry interesting how do you reconcile this with the fact that some people might say that being within your comfort zone might mean that you are secure or that you're content? And so how do you reconcile that with like, okay, I'm, I'm a secure person. I'm in my comfort zone. I'm secure with where I'm at. I don't feel like I need to be leveling up like we say. How do you reconcile that with like getting out of your comfort zone and the benefits of getting out of your comfort zone? So I'm glad you said that. So here we go. You ready? <laughs> I'm, re I'm ready. All right. Here's where people get it confused. Listen, I'm going to say it again. Here's where people get it confused. When you talk about security or being secure and in your comfort zone, when you speak on being secure, you should be secure in yourself. Hmm. Not in what you're doing, not in what's going around, but secure in yourself. When you're secure in yourself, you can flow and you can move about. And that's the difference between being in a comfort zone and being secure in yourself. Ah. So while there is security associated with being in your comfort zone, that's about the things that are happening, the things that are going on or the things that you're avoiding. But when you're secure in yourself, hmm. none of that matters about what's going on or what you're trying to do or what you're in the midst of. Because when you're secure in yourself, you got the confidence in yourself and you know what you're about and you step outside of that comfort zone with that same sense of security, but it's not in what's going on around you, it's in you. Mm. And I think that's what that's where people get it confused at because they're like, I'm safe, I'm in my comfort zone and this is a spot of security for me. Why are you putting your security in things Mm. Your security should be in yourself after God, obviously. Yeah. That first. But your security should be in yourself. 
you believe in yourself, you're secure in who you are as a person. Mm. And then based on the security that you have in yourself, that's how you should attack those things that you're trying to accomplish. Not let those things dictate how secure you feel in the place that you're in. Mm. And I think that's where people get it confused. Mm -hmm. So when they're in a comfort zone, they feel a sense of security, but they're not secure in who they are. Mm. And that holds them right there in that comfort zone. Ooh. I told you, I, girl. But you, you preaching tonight. Because but, like, but, but that's what it is. Yeah. And that's what I believe it is. And I think you're right. And I don't know that I've ever heard it put like that before. Because when I think about comfort zones, I think about security. Okay, so I'm a woman. And when we talk about the differences between sexes, where women usually tend, again, I don't, I don't like stereotyping ever, but a lot of research says that women tend to find security in finances. They find it in having somebody who can provide for them or provide with them. And so if they ever fall out of those external things of security, then they get really, like I have felt in the past or I mean, sometimes now I'm like, if we don't have financial security, that is a risk I don't want to take. I'm terrified of taking that risk. I'm terrified of this. And especially because, I mean, we talk all the time, like if we were younger, we didn't have kids, like what could we be doing and what risks could we take and what could we, you know, do with what we want to do, but we have kids. And so I get really, I get a little bit insecure and just want to stay stuck in the comfort zone where we, where I feel like the security is there. And what you're saying is the security has nothing to do with external factors, but has everything to do with being secure with yourself. So knowing that if we fail, we can come back again. We can come back. And being secure in that. Yep. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. So that's, that's the whole security or secure versus comfort zone. So now that we know that, mm -hmm. how do you, how do you do this? How do you do the self work and the heart work to assess if you are in a comfort zone, if you are, if you need to move out of your comfort zone, like what are some of those things? What are some of those signs? Well, you know, we always start off with self-assessing. Mm -hmm. If you didn't know that I was about to say that, then you haven't been rocking with us for a long time. <laughs> you have to start there, but here's the most important part. And here's where, when you're talking about comfort zone and you're talking about being secure in yourself, where people, I feel like lose the edge is they're not honest. When you're in a comfort zone, it makes you think differently. It's a mindset thing as well. Yeah. And you're self-assessing and you're not being completely honest with yourself and figure out and identifying why you're stuck or you're in this comfort zone. So I think the first thing you have to do is one assess mm -hmm. and, it, and it goes a little bit deeper than, oh my gosh, like I'm just good here. Like this is my bubble. I'm, I'm comfortable. Like it's deeper than that. Why are you there? Why are you complacent? Why are you okay with being complacent and being honest with yourself and saying that I'm afraid to fail? Mm -hmm. or I don't know enough or I need someone to help me out of it. Mm. But those are things that people, you know, don't honestly or openly want to accept or say. And that goes back to that sense of secure within who wants to be like, ah, oh, man, I can't do this by myself. I need somebody to help me through it. Mm -hmm. What do they do? Oh, no, nah, I'm good. I got this. I'm going to just hang right here. That's because true. life's been treating me well right here. That's true. Who wants to do that? So can I put you on the spot? Put and, me on the spot. And ask if you have ever found yourself in a comfort zone like this and had trouble or fears or like found yourself kind of stuck like you were too afraid to move out of it for a period of time. Yep, absolutely. And I'll take it a, a step further because I know how we kind of interchange we talk about relationships and then we talk about life in general mm -hmm. i was in a long-term relationship because i was comfortable in the relationship mm -hmm. because at that time the sense of security that it brought me of having someone by my side mm 
as I was going through struggles, as I was going through bouts of depression, as I was going through bouts of anxiety about where my life was taking me and what I was going to do next. Just having that person there and some of the external things that being with that person provided for me Mm -hmm. kept me there. And that was a comfort zone for me. And I didn't step outside of the comfort zone in that relationship to grow that relationship, to develop their relationship, to um, find out, you know, what was best for me and the other person. And I just kind of hung out right there. And one, it was selfish. But two, when you're talking about being stuck, I was stuck. And, and I felt like that at the time, but because of everything that was going on and because of all the extrinsic things that you mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. financially, well, I had a place to stay and I had someone to split the cost with. You know, you want to talk about the personal side of it or the personable side of it. Well, when I didn't want to be alone, I had someone there. Mm. You know, when you want to talk about doing things or, or having that encouragement or trying to figure things out, I had someone to always try to uplift me or someone to at least just be in the midst. Mm. And I got comfortable in that. And therefore, I stopped chasing after or trying to achieve what the overall objective was, was which to better myself, to find out which direction I was going in life and to figure out what I was going to do. Was that fair to me? No. Was that fair to the other person? No. But that's where I was. Mm. And I never stepped outside of that comfort zone. And it caused a lot of issues. It caused a lot of problems along with some other things to the point to where you just kind of settle in and you don't grow and it's just kind of like if you hurt yourself, the atrophy, like you lose all your muscle, mm-hmm. you just kind of deflate until I, I got put put out, <laughs> which is probably the best thing for me. I mean, you know, and, and not what you really want to go for. But as I was going through all of that, I found a comfort place and I just kind of hung out right there. And I could have told you, like, I knew that that wasn't going to work. And there were a lot of things that... um you know, if I could have done differently, I probably would have thought about them differently, knowing that where I'm at now. But in that moment, I was stuck. So I think that this probably, that's probably something that would resonate with a lot of people that watch us. And especially knowing um, a lot of people that do watch us and listen to us are like in the age range of 18 to 40. So probably a lot of people might deal with this or they might feel like they're stuck in a relationship where they just feel stuck or they just feel like they're in their comfort zone, but they know there's more out there for them. Yep. So I'm curious, how did you, what was the catalyst for you to get out of that comfort zone and to better yourself? Like you said, you got thrown out, but yeah, well, I'll, <laughs> if I'll, there's a catalyst for you to like improve or like be you know what was that for you there's always a rude awakening that's what the catalyst is Mm -hmm. a rude awakening and it's going to come one way or the other and that's going to be by the way that it came to me and i got put out Mm. or it's going to come the way to where you realize that like you said there is more for me or more for us Mm -hmm. and you got to make a decision and that decision is i'm going to step outside of my comfort zone I'm going to grow. I'm going to learn. I'm going to, to, to develop mm-hmm. more for me or more for us. And once that happens, you're going to make a decision and it's either going to be for you or it's going to be for the two of you. Mm. Or on the other end of it, somebody, it could be the other person. They're going to think the same way and say, oh, my gosh, we're not going anywhere. I feel stuck because you're stuck. Mm-hmm. So you got to go and that's them looking out for them. So one way or the other, it's going to happen. But if you're listening and you feel like it's you, one of the best things to do is what I said in the very beginning. Self-assess and mm-hmm. be honest about it. If you're like, man, I'm stuck here because this person provides half of the rent. I'm stuck here because this person supports me. I'm stuck here because this person takes care of me and none of it is surrounded with you wanting to be with that person 
and grow with that person and develop with that person and level up with that person and be with that person, mm -hmm. then you need to be out. Plain and simple as that. That's true. Hard to do. I was gonna say. Easy for me to say. <laughs> but if you self assess and you're being honest, then that's something that you have to at least think about. And once you start to think about it, I feel like it'll start to kind of move things and it'll start to kind of rev the engine and it'll start to kind of flow and it'll get you to a place to where hopefully you're at least like, all right, well, maybe I need to have the conversation. Yeah. Or maybe I need to see where the other person is. I think if you're, I think, I think the bottom line is if you're feeling like this in a, in a relationship, especially like a close intimate relationship that matters because it's day in and day out and you're ready to have that conversation that we actually have a really good episode on having difficult, difficult conversations mm -hmm. and how to give and receive feedback. And I think that's going to be key to how you approach this because I can see you know, you said like there might be some sort of rude awakening or like a catalyst, but it may be a slow process. It may not be like, you know, somebody getting thrown out and then that's the <laughs> rude awakening. It might be a slow process where you're just kind of realizing all of a sudden, like I feel stuck in the relationship and I have not done a self-assessment to understand, do I need to be in this relationship? Are we good for each other? Um, are we both moving in the same direction together at the same pace? And so maybe those are things that you need to evaluate. Maybe it's an, a, a uh, ability. That's not the right word. A time that you can talk to your partner and see like, are you feeling the same way? Or maybe it's a time that if you talk to your partner and they're not feeling the same way, then you do need to exit the relationship. And so I think that like all, I'm. thank you for sharing that story. Yeah. And I do want to encourage you guys, if you are in this type of relationship and you're like, I don't know where this is going, think about it, self-assess. And then if you're like ready to have the hard conversation, we have a couple episodes that I'll link to in the show notes about how you can do that and where you can go for that. Don't wait around and stay stuck like me and get thrown out. That's no, no good. You don't want that. <laughs> no, you don't. You got to go pick up all your stuff off the ground. <laughs> so don't, I'm sorry, I'm laughing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, right? Don't do like me. Don't wait around. And, and especially if you know. Yeah. Like if you know it's not going anywhere, you're not really seeing it going anywhere, or you have doubt or hesitation, yeah. it's not fair to the other person. So I'm making, you know, light of it now. And it wasn't fair to the person that I was with. Um, but looking back, there was a lot that I needed to deal with myself. And that was probably the best move that that person made by putting me out. Um, because what that did was they gave me an opportunity to do another self-assessment and to be honest. Yeah. And I'm glad that it happened uh, because I got hurt. So I'm, I'm ecstatic. I'm like, yes, I'm glad you threw me out. <laughs> Yes. I'm glad to. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm ecstatic about that thing. I mean, that was never the point of the story, no, but I'm very no. happy. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I want to keep it real. I know I use that as an example, but at the same time, yeah. I'm like, whew, that was a win-win. Because -win. I wasn't doing nothing for her at the time, you know, and she yeah. threw me out, which opened me up for you. So yeah. I'm like, that was a win-win hey. for, for both of hey. us. Yeah. You know, the come up, I came up. Uh -huh. I don't know about her, but I came <laughs> up. But um, you know what, though? What I wanted to share was, I, because I'm not going to um, disrespect anybody, um, and I feel like I'm starting to go that route, so I don't want to trash. I don't want to trash her. I'm not going to, you know, name no. drop or anything like that. I don't want to be disrespectful because that's just not me, and that's not in my character. Right. But what I was going to say is this same thing can be used if you're in a job. Yeah that you're just kind of in your comfort zone and you feel like you yeah. just go in and do the bare minimum and you're not growing as a person, you're not growing as a professional, you're not developing yourself right. and you're just kind of in a comfort zone. Like you can take those same steps to a self-assessment. Is this job really for me? What is my next career step? What am I learning to get me there? What am I doing to get me there? Am I preparing myself to get there? Or am I just stuck doing mundane day-to-day -day task and, and I'm not elevating and leveling myself up 
in the situation or the job or the place that I'm in that's going to help me take that next step. Mm -hmm. So that's that's definitely I agree. Um, something to think about. And hopefully that rude awakening is not, not you, you getting, getting fired. fired. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, sometimes it is, though. But sometimes don't. it is, and sometimes that could actually be the best thing for you. Yeah. But if you know and you got that feeling, don't wait for it. Start putting yourself in position yeah. to make the next move. And you can do that by taking advantage of opportunities yes. to continue to level up, yes. to continue to develop yourself, to continue to build your skill set. Yep. Do that if you feel like it's not for you so that when it's time to make moves, yes. you're in a position to take Thank a step you. and not miss the step. Oh my gosh. Thank you. I'm so glad that you said that. Lordy day. Just, you know, cheer, cheers, cheers, cheers to, you cheers to that. Saying. Yeah. So thank you for saying that because I think this is really important. I don't think that people should stay stuck in careers that are not right for them or they're not happy in, but, and this could be kind of the risk adverse side of me, but it's also the smart side is like you said, take advantage of the resources that you have either while you're there, even if it's not while you're there, use the money that's coming in to create your own resources, to create your own opportunities for learning, development, figure out what it is that you want to do, what makes you happy in a career, because that is really important. And so I don't want people to like, well, April and Daryl said I should just go out and quit my job yeah, before nah, you don't fire. Do that. Here, let me let me bring some clarity to that. I'm glad that you said that as well. So let Daryl bring some clarity to that because bring if you quit clarity. your job, don't be hitting me up talking about some Venmo me some money <laughs> or cash at me. Because let me tell you what you're going to get from me, a cash app of zero, mm. a Venmo of zero because I ain't got time for that. But let me bring some clarity to what I was saying. So if you're in a situation mm -hmm. and you know and you got that feeling, hang in there as long as you can, as long as it's not detrimental to you and your health, and learn as much as you can. Take advantage of opportunities mm -hmm. until you're ready to level up, move, step out, whatever your next step is. Mm -hmm. All right. In the meantime, you still have to make accurate and precise decisions around who you are in that space. Yeah. Don't be like, I don't like it here. And you're like, I'm gonna get outside of my comfort zone and you just start making irrational decisions. Yeah. Like you can't do that. I didn't say stupid, I said irrational. <laughs> but I wanted to say stupid. <laughs> So don't be like, oh, well, I'm in a comfort zone, but they said step outside of my comfort zone. So I'm about to go and do this. No, like, don't do it. <laughs> go in, do your job, learn as much as you can, take advantage of the developmental opportunities. Mm -hmm. And when the chance comes for you to step up, you're ready and you won't miss the step. Yeah. So hopefully that was clear. I want to make sure that was yeah. clear because I don't want people going out there saying, Daryl April said, step outside of my comfort zone. No, I'm about to step outside of my comfort zone. Peace. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. Do it the smart way. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I really want to hit on, um, because we're kind of coming up on the end of our time, and I'm super curious. Well, A, mm -hmm. you know that I love visuals and right. seeing data and visuals. And I'm so excited about this. So I do want to get to that. But I also really want to address something else that you had in your notes. And that is Go for it. collateral damage in your comfort zone. Right. I really want you to talk about that. All right. So I wrote that in the notes because I feel like when you're in your comfort zone, there's going to be a lot of collateral damage. Can you explain that? Yep. Let okay. me explain that. So what I mean by that is, and I kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier, but when you're in your comfort zone, you're not growing. Mm. And I use the analogy of atrophy. Mm -hmm. So the collateral damage is as comfortable as you feel, as secure as you feel, as, you know, cozy as you feel, the whole time that you feel like that, you feel cozy, you feel secure, the atrophy is setting in and that's collateral damage. Mm. So that if you ever come to a time to where you're like, all right, I've been here too long. I got to do something. I got to move with atrophy. What happens? You lose the muscle. So mm -hmm. when you try to move, you can't even move. 
because you've sat in your comfort zone for so long. That's a collateral damage. So don't sit there for so long. Don't wait for the atrophy to kick in to where when you finally decide you want to step outside of it and you want to move, you can't even move because you don't have any muscles to move. That's what I call the collateral damage. That's really good. So at the time that you're feeling cozy, at the time that you're feeling secure, at the time that you're feeling comfortable and you're just stuck right there and you're just hanging tight and you're like, I'm good right here. And something hits you and that you have that epiphany and you're like, it's time for me to make moves. I got to go. I got to do this. I got to step outside of this comfort zone. Yeah. Atrophy has set in Ooh. and you go to move and you fall. Mm. And where do you fall within that same comfort zone that you're in? Because you don't have the strength and the muscles to step outside of it. And that's the collateral damage from staying in your comfort zone for too long. How do we start to PT physical therapy or atrophied muscles in 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 a comfort zone? Perfect. This is how you do that. Start small. Okay. Right? One of the best things that you can do to start small is self-assess. Okay. Be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Read books. Okay. Find out information. Find out knowledge. Find out things that's going to help build you back up so that when you stand up and you're ready to step out, you got the energy to come out. But you spent so much time starting small and building yourself back up. That you're not just stepping out, you're stepping out. Ah, okay. So you got to take the time, you got to start small, you got to build yourself back up. What happens is when you get to that point to where you're tired of being there and you can't be there anymore, you try to make that big move and you fall on your face because Mm. the atrophy is set in and you don't have the strength. But just like if you start working out, you can't go in there if you haven't lift weights in a long time and try to lift the whole gym. (sighs) Come on now, you're going to embarrass yourself one and you're going to put a lot of pressure on the people around that's supposed to be providing the safetyness. Yeah, I think that's I think that's fair. But I also think that that is a big thing in our culture is because we're such a diet. This is way go big or go home. It's We're a diet and fitness culture. And so if you're coming back and you're like, I need to make up for lost time. You go big and you go home. And then the second day you're like, I can't even get there. I'm so sore. And then you let another day pass to rest. And then another day pass to rest. And then all of a sudden you find yourself in your comfort zone. And you're like, oh my gosh, it's been four weeks and I need to go back to the gym. And then you go hard again. So I like that you that you said that, that you need to start small, start small. when you're in your comfort zone. Read a few books. Yeah. Read articles, like yeah. start the self-development process to get out of your comfort zone, but keep doing it every day. It's like working out. I'm really glad you exactly. used that analogy because that's, yes. So yes. that that's the collateral damage. Okay. With perfect. That, that's what I, I meant that. by that. I don't okay. know if anybody's ever said it like that, if you ever heard it like that, but I told you when I'm ready to go, it's, it's just there. Yes. So I like that. There it is. Everybody have it now. That was just my own little personal tidbit I but i just it. shared that with the world i love it i really want you i know we're coming up on our time yeah we're good but i really want you to explain some of this diagram because i love okay. diagrams yeah and i think it's important and i think we might be able to overlay it yeah i can do that okay i think we can overlay it so people can see what we're talking about so yeah um, so within the diagram it yeah. kind of shows you the different steps and when you're in your comfort zone it says like hey, that certainty is there And then the next step outside of the comfort zone is the fear zone. So when you're deciding to step outside of your comfort zone, it's going to create a sense of fear because you're leaving that familiar space. You're leaving that space that uh, provided a sense of security for you. So you're going to be afraid. And what that's going to do is create, you know, the self doubt. And that's going to create the second thoughts. And what you have to do is power through. And when you power through being scared, the next phase is learning. And when you're in the learning zone, that's when you're like almost there. You're you're attaining information. You're kind of building that self-confidence. Um, you know, your skills are continuing to grow and develop. And then what that does is that transition you to the growth zone. 
And in that growth zone is where all the magic happens. That's like where you're um, you're elevating, you know, as we say, you're leveling up. And as you kind of go through that process, you start from the comfort zone and you work your way through the fears. And then once you do that, you start to learn. And then once you start to learn, you grow. And then once you grow, your ideas are coming. You're out there. You're making moves Mm -hmm. and you're excelling. I love this too because I think it puts a a little bit of a different spin on what we've been talking about all night and we talk about comfort zone um, a a little not negatively but I guess kind of in a negative light and I think that this diagram helps put it in perspective that you still have to have some portion of that comfort zone like I think of how do I explain this? We are we are always trying to learn and grow in our relationship and try to, you know, level up as we say in our relationship. But there is a sense of comfort and security within our relationship that is actually grounding. It's grounding for us, it's grounding for our children, and I think it's super important to have this sense of no matter what happens, and what decisions that we make in regards to our future, in regards to our business, in regards to our family life, we will be strong and we yeah. will provide a sense of comfort and security. And so in that sense, we will always have that comfort and security. But at the same time, I think about this, especially in terms of like our children, is I want them to find comfort and security in us but be able to move into a fear zone and to and to manipulate the fear zone and move out of it so that they can learn and then they can grow. Right. Um, so I think it's an important point. Like we, you don't want to get stuck where your whole life is in a comfort zone, but there is, it's almost like a Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yeah. There has to be a baseline of there's always going to be a comfort zone that you can come back to, but you should never stay there very long. And it should be an underlying, like, we'll provide comfort, we'll provide security, but we're still going to push you and we're still going to push ourselves. Right. And, and I see it like this. You create a new comfort zone every time you grow. Uh Ah. That's how I see it. So you- And that makes sense. You're in a comfort zone, right? And you're like, okay, I gotta get out of this. I wanna do better than where I am right now. And you're like, I'm a little scared, but I'm going for it. You get past the point of being scared and you're like, all right, I got this. I need to learn as much as I can so that I can continue to grow. And when you grow, you're gonna create that new level And within that level, you're going to be like, all right, I got this. And that's now where the new comfort zone is. Hmm. And then what you do from there is you're like, all right, I got this. Whoo, I got to take another step. But this is scary. I got this. All right, I'm out there. And then you're like, what can I learn? How can I grow? You elevate, you take another step. You're like, I got this. And you become comfortable And that's your new comfort zone. So Mm -hmm. every comfort zone that you have should be leveling up with you. And you should be growing and using the comfort zone as steps. So I think that you should never fall back to the original comfort zone that you started in. Yeah. Because every time you elevate, it should create a new sense of a comfort zone that you're then stepping outside of and continuing to grow. Using each one to elevate yourself. Mm. So that's how I see this. I literally okay. see this as that. So once you reach the growth, yeah, that growth zone then turns around and becomes your new comfort zone oh. after you've gotten it, after you've kind of mastered that area. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, okay, I'm ready to take the next step. Mm. And I think that's smart because then you never stop growing. You never stop growing. You never stop developing. Yeah. You never stop pushing. And that's why... I am the way that I am now because I'm so big on that legacy Mm. and I don't want my kids to ever see me stop growing. And before they were here, I I was kind of okay. And I would hang out in the comfort zone a little bit longer than I probably should have. Mm. And then as that atrophy started sitting in, I'd be like, Oh, I better get up and go do something. But now with them, I don't even want them to see it set in. Yeah. I don't even want them to see it. I want them to be like, daddy loves me and daddy is about his business 
And that's what I want to do. I want to be about love and about my business. And I want to be a better person every day. Oh. That's that's what I want them to see. Yeah. And that's what we work with them on. Yeah. We so. Do. I don't even have anything else to say. <laughs> hey, good. if you stuck in a comfort zone <laughs> and you know you are or you don't know you are, just do that self-assessment. Yeah. And if you know you are, find out what it'll take for you to make a move. And if you don't know that you are, be honest with yourself and get to the root of why you are there. Yeah. And then make a move. And then get past that fear. Learn. Grow. Yeah. Elevate. Elevate. Level up. Level up. Agree. You got it. I believe in you. You yeah. just got to make a move. Yeah. Don't it's wait hard. for somebody else to make it for you. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not. But it's worth it's worth doing. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So, all right. All right. Never too late to make success your lifestyle. Oh, hey. You heard. <laughs> I also want to say, if you guys are enjoying this and you're loving our episodes, I think we say this in our closer, but I really just want to reiterate, like, hit the subscribe button. Yeah. Please hit the subscribe button. You're going to get us in your inbox, in your whatever podcast venue you subscribe to you're gonna get us every yeah. single week because we put out a new episode every single monday for your monday morning motivation that's right yeah so hit the subscribe button and go to our youtube channel because you can watch us and you can watch fun family videos i'm about to put a really fun one out about daryl on saturday that he doesn't even know about oh my goodness hey if y'all <laughs> have anything that y'all want to hear us talk about just because you like listening mm -hmm. to us and hearing our perspective definitely shoot it to us in the dm um send us a message let us know and we'll talk about it and see if it's a topic that um, we want to address and, you know, we'll see where it goes. So yeah. if there's something you want us to talk about, definitely hit us up. Let us know what that is. Um, we're going to keep bringing forth the information, the content that we're doing now, hoping that you're taking something away from it. Yeah. We appreciate you. Let's call it a night. Let's do Wait, one more thing. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Sorry. I know. All right. But one more thing, because I do want to plug that we are coming up really close. We have literally one more episode, and then we're celebrating our year anniversary oh of my being gosh. podcasters. We've been doing this for a year. We've been doing this for an entire year. Every single week, consistently, we're showing up for you guys, dropping knowledge bombs, giving you real talk. Sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's like, we know you need to hear this stuff and put it to use. But every week we're coming to you and we've been doing it for a year. So we're wow. going to have a big celebration. You guys are going to see a lot more about it coming up in the next week or so. And then just stay tuned because we are already working on some really cool things that we can celebrate with you that week. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. We're Any, excited. Anything else? I think that's it. <laughs> All right. Until the next time. We out. Peace. Bye.